What's up, everybody? Welcome back to another video on my channel. My name is Josh Fan of ShowMeFootball.com, and this is going to be my Chiefs Bills recap and uh, thoughts after the game. So, for those of you that don't know or don't follow me on social media or anything like that, I actually attended this Chiefs Bills game last night with a few friends. We had been looking forward to it for months. And um, it was probably one of the worst experiences I've ever had at a football game um, for obvious reasons. And it really is a shame because I thought this was a game that needed to be treated like a playoff game. I really did, you know, have some hope in the back of my mind that the Chiefs would come out with a sense of urgency and they would, you know, beat up on the Buffalo Bills to once again prove that they're still that team. But the reality is they're not that team and they've shown us through five weeks now that they aren't that team and I really question the people who are still sitting here through five weeks this season and saying this team that like they're still optimistic about this team or that this team is still a Super Bowl contender they're not I mean they're they just they're not at all I've got a lot of things to say about this game I'm not happy um but you know at the same time I do kind of feel like um, my doubts uh, from this off season and the, you know, to this point in the regular season have been confirmed. Um, you know, a lot of my concerns have come to light. You know, people, I had a lot of people who would come on my videos during this off season or um, you know after some games and be like, oh, you're just overreacting. The Chiefs are fine. They've been to back to back. Super Bowls and three straight AFC Championship games, and Brett Veach is the greatest thing ever, and Patrick Mahomes can save them all the time. Yay, everything's going to be okay. But guess what, guys? That's just not the case anymore. I, I said it after the Browns game, and I will say it again. Um, the days of the Chiefs playing like complete shit for three or four quarters and expecting to still win are over because if you look at the Chiefs big wins that's how most of them have come it's that they play sloppy for about three or three and a half quarters and then they finally turn it on and they make something happen Mahomes pulls a rabbit out of a hat and I'm here to tell you that that it's it's that that can't happen anymore it's not going to happen like the Chiefs had to actually play good <laughs> But people kept saying I was overreacting, I don't know what I'm talking about, whenever I pointed out all the team's holes. Guys, I mean, the roster depth, it, it's an abomination what general manager Brett Veach has put on the field this year for this organization. I mean, they just have zero depth. The talent on defense is questionable. Um, I'll get to the defense separately in a little bit. Uh, I just kind of want to start from the top down, though. Uh, but Brett Veach, I mean, after this game, how can you not question him? Seriously, I mean, again, <laughs> and I've said it every single week now. I sound like a broken record saying this stuff, but how much did we say this past offseason that wide receiver two was a problem? How many times this past offseason did we say defensive end was a problem? How many times this past offseason offseason did we say that we would like to see some depth at in the secondary and how many of those got fixed Veach's roster management has caught up with this team and I just I can't I don't understand the people that sit there and act like that Veach can do no wrong and that he's built this team well he hasn't I mean his draft picks are horrible uh, I went over this with Lucas Murphy from the beat of KC his drafts are bad his uh, free agency classes are very mediocre and people always hit me with the, Brett Veach has taken us to back-to-back -back Super Bowls and three straight AFC Championship games. Guys, stop saying that. Brett Veach inherited a team on the rise. Can we not? Can we admit that? He inherited a team on the rise from John Dorsey. John Dorsey was horrible at managing the cap um, and was really bad at negotiating contracts, but there's no doubt that he drafted all the cornerstone players on this team. Name the cornerstone players that Brett Veach has drafted. Name them. Like, who who, who on this team that Brett Veach has drafted would you consider to be up there with Tyree Kill and Chris Jones as building, like, true building blocks of the franchise? Name one. I'll wait. There isn't one. He has not drafted a single cornerstone to this team. He's drafted guys with some promise, but none of those guys you would say, hey, you know what, like, they're going to get a huge uh, extension after their rookie contract. None of them. Not a single one. I don't care what this team did in the past. I don't care if Brett Veach was the general manager when this team went to back-to-back -back Super Bowls. The goal is to create longevity, and Veach took over a team in which he had the potential 
you know, to make a dynasty out of it. You know, this, this team was a dynasty in the making. He had everything. He had Patrick Mahomes on a rookie deal and a bunch of talent, and he screwed it up. Simple as that. He screwed it up. He screwed it up by trading for Frank Clark and paying him quarterback money. He screwed it up by taking Clyde edwards helaire in the first round. He screwed it up by not bringing in the right type of free agents. And for as much as people give him credit for rebuilding the offensive line, he only rebuilt it when it was so bad of a problem that it actually kept this team from winning a Super Bowl. Like, people give him credit all the time for that. And, you know, he did do a good job turning it around in one offseason, I feel like, uh, or at least at the time. But the reality is that that would, that would have never happened if they had started investing in offensive line earlier than that which should have always been a priority with Patrick Mahomes on your team. But while we're on the offensive line, it's time to point out the fact that the Chiefs tackles, and I was waiting for a little bit, and, you know, they, they'll they still take time to get better. Um, but at this moment, the Chiefs tackles have not been great at all. Lucas Yang has been worked for three straight weeks. Orlando Brown was horrible last night. Um, it's time to start questioning if Beach brought in the right guys at the tackle spots. Overall, I just... I, how can you not be disappointed in Brett Veach, especially after last night's performance? I mean, seriously. Just looking at the actual game from last night, though, um, let's start with the defense. Uh, I got to admit, I did not feel great after even after the Bills' first offensive drive, how easily they moved the ball in the Chiefs. From there on, I knew it was going to be a long night, and they just the Chiefs could not do anything to stop them. Um I I don't know what people don't understand um, about the statement that the Chiefs are not winning anything with this defense. Like, they, they're they not. And this is worse than Bob Sutton's 2018 defense so far. Uh, I, th- I think, you know, that's one of the most shocking parts about it. This is year three under Steve Spagnuolo. It's not like this team had a ton of turnover last year. And this is by far the worst defense we've seen in Chiefs history. Let me give you guys the stats that they had up on the screen last night. Here's the Chiefs' points allowed from this season. Week 1 against Cleveland, 29 points allowed. Week 2 against Baltimore, 36 points allowed. Week 3 versus the Chargers, 30 points allowed. Week 4 versus the Eagles, 30 points allowed. Last night, 38 to the Bills. Five straight games allowing 29-plus points. Tied longest streak or I'm sorry, not streak, tied longest to start season in NFL history. Horrible. Absolutely horrible. And I was joking last night about how I miss Bob Sutton, but at least Bob Sutton's defense got pressure on the quarterback. What does this defense do well? And a lot of people are arguing whether it's the talent or whether it's Steve Spagnuolo. It's a combination of both, guys. I mean, yes, when you look at the talent, the Chiefs don't have a lot. Like, Dan Sorensen is out there playing. Ben Neiman is out there playing. Like, that's that's stuff that cannot happen. But at the same time, um, you have a defensive coordinator that refuses to acknowledge these players are not the ones that should be out on the field. Um, I've preached that, at this point, Dan Sorensen should not see the field for more than 10% of the snaps. Um, <laughs> I mean, the Bills just targeted it. They targeted him all night, and they should have, and it worked. Um, Armani Watts should be in the game. Why is Spags not giving Juan Thornhill more snaps at Dan's spot? Why is why is Spagnuolo not playing Dorian O'Daniel, who has to be better than Ben Neiman? I mean, he has to be. There's no freaking way Ben Neiman is, or uh, Ben Neiman is better than Dorian O'Daniel. I mean, you have to make that change. Um, also, another one, I, I noticed that Willie Gay, for being back last night, I know it was his first game back, so maybe they were trying to ease him in, but he didn't play all that much. Ben Neiman was still in there a lot. And then these guys, they still look like they don't know where to line up. Five weeks into the year, and I saw it last night live at the game, they are pointing, they are running around all the way up until the ball is snapped. They don't know where to be, and that's a coaching issue. That's a Steve Spagnuolo problem, and I'm on the fire Steve Spagnuolo train. I think it's gotten bad enough. I really do. Like, heads have to roll after that performance. You cannot come out of that performance and not change a single thing and not cut a single player. Like, something has to change after that game, and no, that's not just a knee-jerk reaction. We have a big enough sample size now. Something has to change. Veach has to make a move for somebody, or someone's got to get fired. I mean, simple as that. Flat out. And then, once again, going back to Brett Veach, um... He didn't give the, he didn't give Steve Magnolo a ton to work with either. I mean, Nick Bolton, as much as I love the dude, 
It's not great in space. He's not great in coverage. Why is he 15 yards down the field covering Dawson Knox? Come on. That can't happen. But, yeah, I mean, Brett Veach, like, why did you not upgrade the safety position if you knew this was going to be the case? Dan Sorensen playing 90% of the defensive snaps. Like, (laughs) when that signing first happened and they brought back Dan Sorensen for another year, a lot of people said, oh, it's fine. He's just a depth piece. He's fine as a third or fourth safety. But I knew that... He was going to be the second safety. Like, come on, guys. You had to have seen that coming. And that's the problem is the Chiefs, they, there's this whatever politics in the locker room, playing favorites, something is going on, and they're just not playing the best players that they have. Like, if you brought in a new defensive coordinator tomorrow, I guarantee you we'd see uh, a lot of personnel changes, a lot of them, that Steve Spagnuolo isn't making. And it's really sad when the fans can see it, but the coach that actually coaches the team can't. And Frank Clark, he had his... Revenge game last night. He finally came back and uh, he did absolutely nothing. He had like a couple pressures and then he had the roughing the passer, which, by the way, was a BS roughing the passer. I'll admit, um, when before they called that roughing the passer and the Chiefs had gotten the ball back uh, off an interception, um, I really felt like there was a chance the Chiefs could come back and win that game. But the roughing the passer getting called just killed all the momentum that the Chiefs had left. But, yep, there's your um, highest paid pass rusher on the team, Frank Clark, not doing anything once again. The defense is a complete and utter abomination. There's no denying that at this point. It's not going to get better unless they make a move. Um, yeah, that's that's it. It's not going to get better unless they make a move. Now, looking at the offense, um, you know, the offense was not great last night either. But I will cut them a tiny bit of slack because... When you have to play with this bad of a defense that always puts the pressure on you that you have to do something in order to win, you know, you have to be perfect all the time, it makes it really hard. And I felt like the Chiefs were, um, uh, like Patrick Mahomes, you can tell that he has that pressure. He has an immense amount of pressure on him, and it's not fair, and it's part of the reason why he has so many turnovers to start the year. Um, Looking closer at the turnovers, though, a lot of people said, you know, the Chiefs, they still... They'll still win a lot of these games. They could be uh, back after the Chargers game. A lot of people said, oh, well, they could be 3-0 and if they just didn't turn the ball over. Well, the reality is they keep turning the ball over, and it's becoming evident that maybe turning the ball over is just who they are. Like, at some point, it's not a fluke anymore. It's not just the team making mistakes. Like, it's just who they are. Like, they're a team that turns the ball over. And if that's going to be the case, this team isn't making the playoffs. And another thing that disappointed me watching the offense last night is – it was embarrassing how easily the Bills um, drove the ball down the field in our defense and scored in like two minutes every single time. And then the ball is given back to our offense and we take 10 minutes to move 20 yards. I mean, I understand winning the time of possession battle and having these long methodical drives, but if you extend drives longer than they have to be, you increase the chance that you screw up somewhere along the way. And that's exactly what happened last night. Like, we've got to get guys open downfield over the middle and start getting the ball moving, get the chains moving, um, more slants down the field. Um, we got to start taking some shots, seriously. The Chiefs' offense was also kind of held back last night because they couldn't run the ball, and it kept them from opening up a lot of things. They struggled to run the ball. Um, and, you know, going back to Clyde edwards helaire you know, another player that I've heavily criticized that people said I was just hating on, and I see more people coming to my side on it. Clyde edwards helaire is not good. Um, yeah, he had those 200-yard games against the Chargers and Eagles, two of the worst defenses in the league. Come on. Um, we needed to see it against a legit opponent. We needed to see him be more consistent. Here we are against a legit opponent, and he doesn't look good at all. Um, and he got hurt last night, so we're going to have to see what his status looks like. He'll probably miss a couple games, if I'm willing to bet. Um, but, you know, I noticed a couple plays in particular where, once again, his vision just looked off. I mean, he completely missed the hole. He ran into a defender um, rather than going for the hole. I would have to go and find the play, uh, but it was it was it was very obvious um, when they replayed it on the jumbotron. And then uh, he went down at first contact a lot, and he also there uh, there was one end around run that he had, and he just had zero burst or zero speed. He couldn't. I mean, he got like two yards when it should have been a first down. And that's another play where I'm like, look, if Jarek McKinnon has the ball, that's a first down. Um, and Clyde just has zero burst, and it's so it's painful. It's painful to watch it. 
I mean, he's he's Daryl Williams is a better running back, guys. I mean, I've said it before. I'll say it again. What does Clyde Edwards Hilaire do that like Spencer Ware couldn't do for this team? And you took him in the first round. That's inexcusable. Travis Kelsey might have been the only good player on the offense last night. All the receivers were terrible. Um, they also stopped using Josh Gordon, even though he had probably one of their better catches in the game. Um, although he's only been here for a couple weeks, so I'm sure he'll get acclimated and get a bigger role in the offense. But um, another thing that really upset me in this game is that Andy Reid, um, and we knew that he always gives guys second chances and he doesn't really seem to discipline players, but it pissed me off when Byron Pringle fumbled a kick return for the second straight week. The second week in a row, he fumbled the kickoff. This time, it got recovered by the Bills. He did that for the second week in a row, and the very next kick return, he was at, back out there again. You have to start disciplining these guys. When they start screwing up, when Byron Pringle does that, of all people, you got to bench him. I mean, come on. He does not deserve to be back out there after doing that. He, you have to put him in the doghouse. This guy fumbled on a kick return two straight weeks, and you're putting him back out there again. That's There's zero discipline there, and that's one of my biggest criticisms of Andy Reid. And going back to Dan Sorensen and Steve Spagnuolo, you know, Reid, he's the head coach, so he can be thrown in here too. But at some point when that guy is getting burnt over and over and over again, he should not see another defensive snap for the rest of the game. And he was still out there in the third and fourth quarter. It's embarrassing. This team is not well built. They're not well coached. And right now, um, they look like they're not even going to make the playoffs. And they could turn it around, but I'm not super confident. I don't know how you could be optimistic about this team unless they go out and make some major moves. Like, how, how can you be confident? Seriously. I mean, that's one of the worst Chiefs performances I've ever watched in the Mahomes era. That was probably Mahomes' worst game as a Chief. Um, and it's probably not close, but... That's all I got to say for this game. Um, it, it was bad. I'm disappointed. You can hear it in my voice. But all that being said, make sure you like, share, and subscribe. Some more Chiefs fans can find this. And make sure you check out my work on showmefootball.com and kckingdom.com. I'll see you all later.